Hopefully this video catches you before the day starts. Hopefully this video catches you before you decide how you're gonna spend your time today. Remembering the fallen. Today's Memorial Day. And you know, I'm a veteran. I think there's a lot of veterans that are on this channel watching this. If not, every but one of you guys probably knows somebody that's served. And a lot of people get Memorial Day confused. They think it's a day to recognize and appreciate people that have served, and that's not the case. Today, today is meant to remember the fallen, remember the ones that paid the ultimate sacrifice, the ones that didn't make it back. And um, a lot of people are going to start their day today, and they think that the way to celebrate is by destroying themselves, you know, drinking their face off. A lot of people, they're gonna feel the pain of losing somebody. They're gonna feel the pain, the guilt that, when you serve with somebody and they pass and you don't, you serve with somebody and they die and you didn't. Survivor's guilt can eat at you your whole life. When you serve with somebody and they they end it themselves or something something happens in their life where they fucking die. You wonder if you could have done anything differently. You wonder if you had made any decision differently if they would still be here. Even if the situation is completely outside of your control. And those feelings, those feelings of guilt, those feelings of, fuck man, I should have been there, I should have, I should have helped, I should have, could have, would have, I should have done something different and this person would still be alive. Those feelings will eat at your soul and hurt so fucking bad. A lot of people don't know what to do with those feelings. And so what they do is they escape them. They turn, they crack a couple beers. They turn, they say, we're gonna barbecue, but then they use the barbecue as an opportunity to get tanked. They just get wasted all day. Tell me how getting wasted is a way to remember and re to respect and remember the fallen. Because the fallen, they would want you to live a very fulfilling and full life. So tell me, how is it that we're honoring them by destroying our lives? I used to have this backwards too. I was the guy that when Memorial Day happened, I would reflect on my friends that had passed, the ones that I served with that had died, and I would turn to escaping, to celebrating. Like, why is that even a word that's associated with remembering the fallen and drinking? Remembering the fallen with drinking. We're gonna celebrate. We're gonna honor them with getting tanked. What the fuck? That doesn't make any sense at all. But somehow that got in my head. I thought that it was a warrior's duty to sit there on Memorial Day and pour some out for the fallen and say, until Valhalla. Broadbander, Jasso, Christopher Rutherford, Kuhn, Mako. These are some of the guys that I served with that are no longer here. There's more. Each of those guys, I can still remember each of their, I still have a memory from each of them. Broadbander was when I was in Hawaii. I was in the 25th Infantry Division. I was a brand new platoon leader and he was a junior soldier underneath my leadership. I remember him being very sarcastic. I remember him being funny. I remember him uh, shooting the shit all the time. And he had a intelligence about him that I admired. He's dead. Jasso. Jasso and I were in the Ranger Battalion together. 
he came to my platoon after one of the companies got stood down, one of the adjacent companies got stood down, and he was coming in during the back half of my platoon leader time. He's no longer here. I remember when he walked into that platoon, I remember his, the thing that stood out the most to me about, about him, about Jasso, was his eyes. I remember looking at him and being like, man, this kid, this guy is so, he's, he's got such a good soul. He's dead. Coon. I was in the mountain warfare school. Coon and I served together in the Ranger Battalion. And I remember we're in this, we're it's freezing fucking cold. We're up in the Sierra Nevadas and the Marine Mountain Warfare School. I'm there as a ranger. And uh, my memory serves me right. That's where this conversation took place. Kuhn came up to me. And I remember we hadn't had a whole lot of interactions, but he was just a hard worker. I would just see him doing all the time. But we had a chance to kind of, he was kind of doing some duties around the patrol base. And we started bullshitting. He immediately started asking me questions about how to become better. He's gone. Christopher Rutherford. In 2006, I was in Iraq. I was 20 years old. And we had this lieutenant that was very charismatic. He was an athlete. He was good looking. He had a charm about him. I remember I looked up to this guy and I was like, man, this is a leader right here. It seems like everybody enjoys his presence when he, he could bring a group together, crack jokes and motivate and motivate people everywhere he went. He was a very nice guy. I remember I was in the, in one of the uh, little shops overseas in Iraq, sitting there, me and him, I'm looking at the magazines. They had magazines over there. I'm flipping through it and I'm looking like a muscle magazine and he's looking at a car magazine and he's taller than me and I remember him looking down down at me and kind of smiling and grinning and we had been overseas for a little while I think it was like six months or something like that at the time and he was looking at like some Ferraris he owned a Toyota Supra and I remember he pitched me his Toyota Supra he said he was gonna sell his Supra and he was gonna buy a Ferrari after the deployment. That was his goal. And um, I remember thinking, damn, he got, he's got that officer money. He's really stacking it up. I'm like, shit, maybe I'll take his Supra. You know, maybe I will take it. So we kind of joked about it. Never put any hard plans into place, but um, that was the last time I saw him. He went out on a patrol. He gave up his seat to ride in an LMTV. And uh, he was hit by a roadside bomb and he was killed in his early 20s. When we got back from that deployment, I was the, I picked his family up. I was assigned to escort his family to the, to, to the service, to the funeral. And uh, I drove them to, I drove them from the airport to the service. And they asked me questions about their son. The parents did. And they said, what do you remember? Did you, did you have a chance to meet our son? I said, yes, I did, ma'am. Yes, I did, sir. And I was in my un military uniform and I'm driving these guys, driving his parents from the airport. And uh, I must've been, at that time, I must've been, I was in my, I was 21 years old. Driving parents of a fallen soldier. So yes, ma'am, I did know him. I really liked him. He made me laugh. But Christopher Rutherford, that was my first, the first person that I knew that died overseas. I only interacted with him a few times, but he had a really long, he had a lasting impact on my life. He taught me to be 
approachable. He taught me to be funny as a leader. He taught me to be me. Mako was uh, my military working dog in the re in the Ranger Regiment. Mako was killed overseas. Guys, most of those individuals were in their twenties, and. Um, I'm gonna think about them all today. I'm gonna think about more than just them. What I, what I ask you guys to do to really remember the fallen today is don't choose debauchery. Don't choose bad habits. Choose becoming better. All of those guys, maybe they would have drank a beer with you, but if they could tell you one thing, I'm sure all of them would want you to live a full life. And that doesn't mean getting tanked. They would want you to live a full life. So you need to do what you need to do to live a full life. I, uh, every single one of those guys, I wondered if I, if I had done something different, if they would still be here. I don't blame anybody for their death. So if you know any of those guys, and maybe you feel responsible, because I know some of you guys, we know each other. Maybe we've even served together before. But if you're sitting here beating yourself up about something that you could have done differently, I want you to stop that shit. And instead, I want you to choose better. Honor them by choosing to live fully today. Release yourself from the guilt and just become the motherfucking leader that you know they would want you to be. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's the only way I found to clear my conscience of what I couldn't have changed. Or what I didn't change or what. It's the only way that I could have cleared my conscience. Remembering the fallen today, guys. Remember them. Choose better today. Live a full damn life. Get up, get that workout in. Read something positive. Study. Spend time with your family. Put in a good day of work, improving the lives of others. Talk to your family members. Bring them up. Bring your, everybody around you up. That's what we need. We don't need to bring everybody down. Get out here in the pool and everybody's got their drinks and they're spilling shit and starting to fight and pass out. and Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Or you, if you, maybe you don't even party, you're just one of those guys that... You drink alone, like that old song, right? I drink alone, yeah, with nobody else. Stupid, man. Choose better today. That's the way to remember the fallen. I love you guys so much, that's the message. Happy Memorial Day. I love every single one of you guys. Those people that did fall, the people that didn't make it back, the people that have passed, they are real heroes. And um, none of us are to blame for their loss. And all we can do is remember the good, remember what they taught us, and just live better lives and bring others up alongside us. I'll see you guys in the next video. Conquer all.